Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Steph and today we have the noisiest neighborhood in the town. So this is going to be the start of a 48 hour readathon because my bestie Erin over from Booked and Busy had a 24 hour readathon over on her Patreon where you let a spinner wheel choose your prompt and then you get to choose a book that fits that prompt alongside Realmathon starting this weekend. So Realmathon started March 1st. If you don't know anything about Realmathon, I will link all of the information down below. But to give a quick overview, Cassidy from Covers with Cassidy has a month long readathon that typically happens in April but is happening in March this year called Realmathon and Realmathon is a points based readathon so you are placed on a team well you're not placed on a team you pick a team you can pick a team that you want to be on and you read for that team. <laughs> this year is a school setting and I am a host for Team Blood for Realm of Blood alongside Sid from Sid Bookworm and I'm very excited. I'm not a very competitive person, but Sid is. And so I think I'm going to be competitive for her because I want to win for her. <laughs> Otherwise, I hope everyone is doing wonderfully during this readathon, <laughs> but also go Team Blood. So all that's to say, when I spin the spinner wheel for the 24 hour readathon, I will be picking books off of my Realmathon TBR and or books that fit in the Realmathon in some way based on the prompts that I'm trying to fulfill or if they give me extra points. So yeah, thank you for being here and hanging out with me. Like I said, I will have Aaron and Cassidy linked down below as well as some information about the Realmathon, like the announcement video, which will have a better explanation than I will ever give and probably answer many questions that you have. So please feel free to check those out. But otherwise, let's get into Friday. <laughs> to keep my promises I play it all close to the face You never see me Hello friends, happy first day of Realmathon. I am currently on sprints on Cassidy's channel, kicking off the Realmathon, but also today is Erin's 24 hour readathon on her Patreon. And in her readathon, we are using a wheel spinner and I'm gonna try to take part in it by using whatever my TBR is for Realmathon. So I'm gonna set you down and we're gonna spin. I have started my first book of Realmathon already because I needed something to do when I was cleaning the house. So I did start slaying the Shadow Prince by Helen Schur, I think. She's the author of Blood and Steel. It's making me want to pick up Blood and Steel. So that is also on my TBR. So we're just going to spin the spinner wheel and then we're going to go and look at my TBR. <laughs> so I'm going to put the Busy B 24 hour readathon spinner wheel <laughs> on the screen and we're just going to see what we get. It's full of prompts. So let's just spin that wheel. Oh, this is a long boy. Featured in a vlog. Okay, so I think that means that this is a book that was featured in one of Erin's vlogs. I don't know if she read Blood and Steel in a vlog. Okay, so I'm actually gonna have to go do some research before we go to the TBR. Okay, hello. I had a little bit of a brain blast because I decided to choose the vlog where Erin came to visit me and I knew in that vlog she specifically read a book, actually two books that are on my TBR, which are on my TBR because of her and that's Bones to the Wind. So I did start this at one point last month and I only got like maybe 50 pages in and I was having a really good time, but last month I was just in a really bad reading slump and I was starting anything and everything. So now I'm actually going to read it this weekend. And it's great because it also counts for a person on the cover, so I'll get 10 extra points. And then I think it counted as new to my TBR as well, which is like one or two extra points. I'm actually so excited to get back into this one because it was one of the first ones that I wanted to pick up for this readathon anyway so I'm very excited. So currently I have Bones to the Wind as my physical read because there is no audiobook and that's the one that I spun for Aaron's readathon and then I am reading well listening to Slaying the Shadow Prince which is a Cassidy fave. This one will get me a lot of points. I think it's like 40 points or something like that. The only thing is I was really hoping that I would be able to pick this up soon but maybe this will come up on the spinner wheel again if I finish what I'm planning to finish this weekend. I'm trying to read as much as possible but I've been really easily distracted recently so hopefully this readathon kind of changes that <laughs> okay but while we're here i am gonna spin the wheel for a second time and i'm only choosing two books right now since i am in the middle of slaying the shadow prince so i do want like three books to be able to go between this weekend i don't think i'll read more than three books this weekend because 
I'm a realist. I really know myself. So let me spin the wheel for a second time. I'm kind of hoping for maybe a short boy. A new release. A new release. Once again, I'm going to have to get back to you. I'm gonna have to get back to you on a new release because I did just get a Tempest of Tea and like I could use that, but I have the discussion for that at the end of the month. So I would rather read it closer to the discussion just so that my thoughts are fresh. I don't know that I have that many new releases right now, especially not small ones. Okay, anyway, I'll be right back. Also, we are on reading sprints right now, which has been really fun. I'm gonna have to get off soon because I have to go to a therapy appointment, but later I will be on Aaron's sprints. So it is a sprint heavy day. It is a very sprint heavy day, which is not normal for me. Hopefully this means I actually read a lot. Cause baby love We have been sprinting all day. I literally sprinted on Cassidy's channel for like three hours before I had to go to therapy. And then as you will have seen, I hopped on Erin's 24 hour readathon sprints. And she clarified for me actually on those sprints that a new release for her and this readathon can mean anything from like the summer of 2023 to now. So funny enough, slaying the shadow prints uh, I think is what it's called. That is considered a new release in her definition, which is perfect because I was really, really struggling to find a 2024 new release that I actually wanted to read or wasn't a sequel to something, which is so funny because I really want to go into Blood and Steel, which is in the slaying the vampire. Vampire? No. There's like a bunch of them that have the slaying the blah, blah, blah. Anyway, this one is slaying the Shadow Prince. That is in the Blood and Steel world. I'm sure it has a series name that I just don't know right now. And so I really Really want to go into it because I really like Helen Scherer's writing, but I I do really like Slaying the Shadow Prince, so I should say that I am more than halfway through it. I think I have two hours left of the audiobook, and I am enjoying it. I really am, but I did pick up last month Slaying the Vampire Conqueror, and I had a similar issue where I feel like standalone fantasy romance just isn't for me, and it's because I love slow burn. Like, slow burn is one of my favorite things in a fantasy romance, and it's not to say that this is bad because I don't think it's bad. I'm actually liking the writing and like the character development and the way that they talk to each other. So like the banter and stuff, I'm liking it a lot, which is why I want to go into Blood and Steel. But the difference is it is a standalone. So by the end of this book, this couple will have their like happily ever after, I'm sure. It's hard for me because I want the tension and I want the buildup. And obviously this whole series of these standalone fantasy romances that are like slaying the X, Y, and Z, and it's kind of set in the world that these authors have created. I think it's perfect in the realm of getting to know and author's writing, but if you are like me and you like series-based things, this isn't the best experience I've had so far because two of them I'm like they're like 3.5 stars they're fine but they're nothing that I'm gonna want to reread I'm not gonna buy these books you know what I mean like they're not bad I'm enjoying it but it's more of like this is cool to get a taste of how someone writes and will I like their world and am I interested in moving forward with potential characters that you meet in these books? Because in this book in particular, Talamar, his apprentice or past apprentice as he'd like to say, is actually the main male love interest in the Blood and Steel series. So it's cool because you get to know him and I'm invested in him as a character. So that's another positive of reading this, but I just have very little investment in the characters and I guess it's probably because it's a standalone and I'm not even sure if I'm ever going to see these characters again. I kind of, not going to lie, I had the same problem with Six Scorch Roses, which I enjoyed. I thought it was beautifully written and I did like the characters, but I felt like to say that you needed to read it before you went into the second book in the Crown of Nyaxia series was a little bit of a stretch. Like I see why you should read it. And the author says to do that. So listen to the author, not me. For how little those characters are in the second book, I just question the need to read that, but that's just my opinion. It's not the right opinion, but that's my opinion. <laughs> I will give you more of my thoughts and opinions once I finish this book, but I did want to update and say that I chose a book. And also I did not start 
or restart Bones to the Wind yet. And I doubt that I'm going to finish slaying the Shadow Prince tonight because I still need to finish the Cybernetic Tea Shop for like a Patreon video. So I'm gonna do that as I'm going to sleep tonight. And I know that I said this was kind of a dedicated vlog to the 24 hour readathon that Aaron is having, but this is probably gonna push into Sunday as well because I would really like to get as much reading in as possible this weekend just because I have a pretty, I have a pretty intense week coming up, I'm not gonna lie. So this is gonna end up going into Sunday. friends i just got ready for the day and i have a live show for miss born with my patrons in like 20 minutes and i'm not gonna lie to you when yasmin and i get together we end up talking for a really long time so i don't know how much reading i'm gonna get done this afternoon but this morning i finished the cybernetic tea shop which i'm giving like a 3.5 stars i really enjoyed this so it's basically a short story about this girl named clara and this kind of ai entity named sal and you see that Sal sort of has the actual feelings and emotional capacity of a human and her feelings and her evolution very much mimic humans. And Clara is human. She works on robots. She does coding. And Sal and Clara have this connection because Clara starts going into Sal's tea shop, the cybernetic tea shop, and they just make a really cute connection and it does turn kind of romantic a bit. But our main character, Clara, is asexual. so that was an interesting exploration. There is a heavy discussion about asexuality in here. There's definitely a heavy discussion about our AI humans, how they're treated in this world slash timeline, because it very much is our real world, but clearly it's like years and years in the future. And the way that AI is treated, especially Sal, because Sal seems to be a very unique version of AI that we're seeing in this world, and her capabilities of having such human emotions and development is pretty unique, it seems, to her and her version of AI. I don't know if I said this, but this is a novella, so it's only like maybe 150 pages. So the world building, obviously, we're not getting a ton of answers. There are a bunch of time jumps. So I did end up liking this. I have a weird time with romance and AI, but I feel like this one, I felt a little differently about, and I don't know how to explain that so much. I ended up giving it a 3.5 stars. It was cute. It's not my favorite thing, but I do think that if you like the cozy vibes of the Tea Monk series by Becky Chambers, you probably have a high likelihood of liking this. If you liked A Closed and Common Orbit specifically by Becky Chambers, I think you would have a good chance of liking this as well because it has very similar conversations. But I think the coziness of the Tea Monk series paired with a lot of the conversations in A Closed and Common Orbit is kind of what the cybernetic tea shop is about. And I'm still in the same spot for slaying the Shadow Prince. And soon I will start Bones to the Wind, but I do want another audiobook. So I think I'm going to do another spin, but I'm going to do that a little bit later because I have to hop onto this live. But I just wanted to update you about where I'm at with my reading. Hasn't been a lot, but I've done some reading. As predicted, it is so many hours later. First off, Yasmin and I talked for hours. I'm not exaggerating, it was like five hours. We did the live show, which was like an hour and a half, and then we 
talked for like three hours because we seem to save all of our catching up for right after the live show and it's very fun and I love it. But obviously that meant that I didn't get a lot of reading done, which is completely fine because I'd rather be social with my friends. That being said though, as soon as I got off the live, I ended up making myself something to eat and then I settled down and I read. And now I'm 70 pages into Bones to the Wind. Still really enjoying this. I'm just really in an audiobook mood. So I wish that there was an audiobook for this, but I do tend to read my Kindle at night right before bed so it's perfect for that because I do have the ebook out from the library and I'm kind of reading this whenever I have the chance. These pages are so white. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this. It's definitely not perfect. I think the writing is compulsively readable, but there are things about the main character. She feels a little, I'm not like other girls at times. This opens up on what I believe is a coming of age trial and it's where they take a set of bones and they're supposed to throw it up in the air. And when it lands in a certain formation, that means something about where they're getting placed in their societal structure. But our main character, Raja, she just like throws it across the land and she gets in trouble and you kind of immediately see that she has a pretty feisty personality. She's very intense and she very much knows what she wants, what her place in society is supposed to be. And I believe this is just the beginning of a series of coming of age trials. The coolest part to me is their whole society is built underneath the bones of this dragon. So it's literally like supposed to be a skeletal structure of a dragon above them and everything is underneath that. I just think that's really cool. But yeah, so far this is really fast paced and it's really fun. It is holding my attention. Like I said, I'm very much in the mood for an audiobook and I finished Slaying the Shadow Prince, the audiobook that I did have. I ended up giving that a 3.5 stars and that's not for a lack of like writing or a lack of liking the characters or the world or anything. As a matter of fact, I actually really liked the characters and I thought this world and the magic system was fairly interesting. But essentially you have two main characters. You have Drew and you have Talamir. And Drew was once a noblewoman turned into a warrior because her world is always on the brink of war with what they call the Shadow Wraiths. And the Shadow Wraiths are actually responsible for the death of almost the entirety of Drew's family except for her father. And so she is constantly experimenting with different tools to try to make weapons that will easily take down shadow wraiths. And one day her and one of her fellow warriors ends up getting attacked by a shadow wraith and Talamir and his apprentice Wilder end up jumping in and saving the day. They're also these very notorious warriors that are only among a few who have passed the rites, so they're very revered. So Drew immediately recognizes them, but she's thrown off because she has a bracelet that can detect when a wraith is near. And so far as she can tell, Talamir is the reason that her bracelet is continuing to warm up and warn her that a wraith is near. So you immediately know that he is half wraith, but what none of us know, not even our main character, he doesn't know his origin story. He doesn't actually know why he's half wraith or like how this came to be, but he does technically fight on the side of good so far as we know. And as you may already know, this series is like the Mortal Enemies to Lovers series. So you can see where this is going. They kind of fall in love. So the thing is, is that I really like that premise. I like the idea of them being enemies to lovers. I loved the half Shadow Wraith aspect of it, especially with him not really knowing his origin story. And I like that there's a little adventure in here because Drew does forge kind of illegal weapons like that bracelet that she has. And because Talamir is a very decorated warrior, he He's like, you need to prove to me that you're not the reason that these Shadow Wraiths are getting stronger because it seems like the Shadow Wraiths in this world are getting stronger and they're under the impression that they're getting help in some way. So they have to kind of go on an adventure together. So it's like forced proximity and they get to know each other a little bit more. And Drew's like, I'm not your enemy. I want these people dead. And honestly, if we're talking about enemies, you are half the enemy. So how do I know it's not you? So they're, they're just kind of trying to prove each other wrong, but also not sure if the other person is on the right side of things. And I thought that was all very interesting. I just think that I'm not a standalone fantasy romance type of girl because the pacing in this was at times to be desired, I guess. Like I still had fun, but during the middle, I was like, okay, 
where are we going with this? What are we doing? Especially with a standalone. I was like, we can't waste time. We were supposed to be on this adventure to get these answers and it seemed like we had all these really random side quests. It just didn't fully work for me. So there's something about the pacing that was like completely off for me. And in the beginning, I was into it. It felt really fast. It felt like we were getting places in the middle, it lulled. And then the end, I was interested again, which is why I want to give it a 3.5 because I can't rightfully say that this is like a four stars new favorite. Had the same issue with slaying the vampire conqueror. There was something about the pacing that was off for me. And also, I think I said this yesterday, Wilder is the main love interest in the Blood and Steel books. So that was cool to get to know him. Also, I think we get to see this couple in Blood and Steel as well, from what I understand. I think Aaron was telling me that you do get to see this couple. So I had a good time. I'm glad I read it. I don't regret reading it. I think of the two, like slaying the vampire conqueror and slaying the shadow prince, shadow prince is definitely my favorite. And I'm very excited for Blood and Steel. I'll probably pick it up soon. Will I pick it up today? The wheel is going to tell us. I'm not even going to say out loud what I'm hoping for or not hoping for because if I say out loud the thing that I don't want, you know I'm going to get it. Ooh, KU. Uh, some of the things on my KU that I have checked out I don't think have audiobooks. So I'm going to keep this one in my back pocket and I'm going to spin again because I'll check KU, but just in case, okay? Just in case. Oh, I didn't want this. I did not want new release. Do I spin one more time? <laughs> is, that, is there even a point to that? Let's just give it another little spin around the block. I'm just getting the same things over and over again, featured in a vlog. Um, this might be a morning me problem. Am I just gonna read this for the rest of the night and I'll pick a book in the morning? What am I gonna do? We'll find out. afternoon it is sunday and i just got back from the bookstore shockingly i didn't buy anything i've been really good about going to the bookstore and not buying anything and as a matter of fact like nothing has really been calling out to me but anyway where we last left off was last night i did spin i spun three times i needed kind of a palette cleanser because i've been heavily in the mood for fantasy romance but sometimes they start to blend together if i just read them back to back to back so i needed a palette cleanser 
And my bestie Erin had just sent me the seven year slip and I ended up finding the audiobook on Libby. So I listened to a chapter and then that turned into five chapters. So I did listen to a good portion of this last night and I'm already really, really enjoying it. I feel like with romance books, I have little expectations going into them, especially because I'm fairly new to reading contemporary romance regularly. I guess my only hope is like slow burn, small town and sort of something happening with the character that they're trying to get over. This is not a small town. This is technically set in New York. Clementine is in the publishing industry, but it feels kind of like an isolated setting because it mainly takes place in her apartment. And we know from the very beginning that something is kind of magical about this apartment that her aunt left her. And at the beginning of the book, we know that her aunt has passed away and she is still very much dealing with that grief. And she has sort of thrown herself into her job at this point. And she's kind of been going through relationship breakups ups because she is so invested in her job and not so much a relationship. Also at the beginning of the book she goes back to work and finds out that she is up for a huge promotion which is actually a promotion that she's kind of been working towards the entirety of the time that she's been in publishing and been at this particular publishing company and it's about to happen and it's happening sooner than she even anticipated. So of course she then comes to find out that her apartment is magical and her aunt has kind of always told her there's something magical about this apartment and it turns out well I don't really know how to explain it actually it's like a time travel -y type thing like this man that she meets and she can't stop thinking about is also living in this apartment but like there's a seven year time difference between the two of them in this apartment it's very interesting i'm only 10 chapters in so i am about 90 pages into it so things are still being explained and we're still kind of learning about how this all works and i assume that the answers about this magic system and how this actually all works is never going to be explained which i'm not really bothered by because i'm not fully expecting it it's not a fantasy but i like how this is being set up and i really like our main character clementine a lot she's a character that i feel like i relate to in so many ways just because she is grieving at this point in time and like I said she throws herself into things to sort of get past that grief and I very much do that <laughs> for good or for bad. And like I mentioned a little bit earlier even though I feel like I'm fairly easy to please with romances these days I do enjoy when a character is going through something like whether it be grief or just these life changes that are allowing them to change and like come into this new season of their life. I really really love that. I feel like it's probably because it's something that I relate to as this has been happening for the last couple of years where I feel like I'm getting to a place in my life where I'm settled, but at the same time, I'm still learning so much about myself and so much about what I want. So really, really love that. Really liking the writing style. The audiobook is great. So I think I'm gonna stick with this one. I'm pretty sure I only have three hours left in this audiobook. So I think I could finish this today. I don't have any intentions of finishing Bones to the Wind. I read a little bit more this morning, still really enjoying it, but it will probably be something that I end up finishing mid this week. I was in such a weird mood last night. So the reading was not happening for me but I'm glad this stuck. I'm glad that I kind of settled on this. And Erin sent it to me because she thinks that I'm gonna love this. Also, if you're wondering where this fits, it is a new release technically based off Erin's rules. And I've seen this featured in so many videos and vlogs all over the internet. So I mean, if it's, if it's. <laughs> Hello friends, we have made it to the end of the 48 hour readathon. As a matter of fact, it's actually Monday and I just wanted to update you on what I accomplished in the 48 hour readathon, but also to let you know that I finished the seven year slip and wow. Okay, so this is like an extremely hyped book. It is extremely hyped. If you've watched like Katie's video about the most popular books mentioned in the top 10 books of the year, this book came up many, many times. Me just watching booktube casually came up many, many times. It is a favorite among friends, among family, among colleagues. What? What am I talking about? So this book is literally everywhere, everywhere. And I've been interested in it ever since people have been talking about it simply because I love grief stories especially in romance. There's just something about that healing process and then falling in love that gets me. Maybe it's just a self-reflection, I don't know. But I was a little bit nervous about this because it's so hyped. Not to say that I don't get the hype because I do. I gave it a four stars. I cried a lot. I really love these two characters so much and I really enjoyed the exploration of grief. I would consider this more of a literary romance rather than a romance that has a grief plotline in it. I feel like this probably falls into the realm of like Emily Henry where there's a lot of character exploration and a lot of healing from things or finding yourself. I would say that if anything of Emily, Emily, <laughs> 
I would say, if anything, by Emily Henry, it reminds me of kind of what this is doing, but absolutely not the same as Beach Read, only because there is a deep exploration of death in there and a character healing from finding out things about their parent and dealing with the grief of their parent. So that's what I mean when I say this feels more literary romance than a traditional romance, because the couple is the focus, but not really. Like Clementine is really going through this grieving process because you know from the beginning that her aunt passed away, but you don't know details about it. And you just know that Clementine has been throwing herself into other things to sort of suppress the fact that she needs to deal with this grief. And eventually by the end of the book, she does. And you begin to find out why Clementine is so avoidant of exploring this grief. I really think that from the beginning of this book to the end, Clementine has such a beautiful character arc. And she just so happens to fall in love with a little cinnamon roll of a guy. But this is all focused on Clementine. Like it is single POV, which at first I was really disappointed by. But then as the story goes on and you get to see what Ashley Poston is actually doing with this, it was beautiful. It's a very beautiful book and I think that had the hype not been so high, <laughs> maybe this would have been a five stars, I don't really know. I just felt like I had too high of expectations going into it, which is a very dangerous thing with hype in general. <laughs> so this was a four stars and I will think about it all the time, I'm sure. In so many ways, it gave me that feeling I got when I read Part of Your World, which was a five star romance for me. I think it's really the only five star romance that I've had, except for maybe a Mariana Zapata. I should say five star contemporary romance. But this did do so many things for me that I'm always looking for in romance. And Irwan as a love interest is just, love him, love him, okay, I love him. We really do love men written by women. And yeah, I basically finished this in two sittings. I just couldn't stop reading it. So it's safe to say this will definitely be a favorite of the year, probably, most likely. And I'm glad that I got to it. Thank you again, Erin, for sending me this and forcing me to read it because I don't know if I would have picked it up anytime soon. And I'm glad that I did because it was really what I needed. I was kind of sliding into a weird reading slump again and i'm like not at the beginning of a readathon <laughs> that being said if you're curious i did want to go over what the books i read this weekend got me points wise for realmathon so i got 10 points for people on the cover i got 10 points for page length and then i got plus three points for this being a popcorn read i also ended up reading the cybernetic tea shop which i talked briefly about i was reading this for a patreon thing so it's technically a required read and that's really the only place i get points for it which was plus three points and then the last book i actually finished was Slaying the Shadow Prince. And this one is quite a few points. I get 10 points for people on the cover, 10 points for red on the cover, 10 points for the page length, and then plus five points for it being a Cassidy fave and plus one point for it being a buddy read because I buddy read it with Rin from my Patreon. And then as you know, I haven't finished Bones to the Wind. So that isn't any points at this particular moment, but I still was at just 70 or 80 pages into that book and still very much enjoying it. I will probably read more today and sort of focus on that one until I finish it and then figure out what I'm gonna read this week. I have no idea. So yeah, that was my 48 hour readathon. I had a lot of fun using the spinner wheel. And also I felt like this was a pretty good start to Realmathon. So remember to join Team Blood, log your points, and happy reading friends. If you've made it this far and have nothing else to say, feel free to use the blood drop emoji or a red heart, something like that, whatever your heart desires. And I will talk to you next time, friends.